We were just given the hand gesture that was like, go. That means this is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Board of Selectmen. If we could call to order a little later than scheduled at 637 on the boards tonight, Marina making sure that we're being kept honest, carrying her three quarters of one vote for adjournment and bringing us live to you. We're going to start off tonight with Bob Ahern, Steve Benjamin, otherwise known as the fantastic duo at the Sunderland Fire Department. And we're going to talk about a municipal aid opt-in agreement. Up? I just made it up right now. I thought it was the dynamic duo. But Fantastic. You can't have them both. It's a Marvel <laughs> DC universe. You can't mash them up. I left the capes at home. I know. Yeah. It's, uh, it's important, too. We had known. <laughs> so we have a mutual aid agreement in front of us. We're going to talk about brief updates with respect to town meeting, a couple of uh, selectmen updates, schedule our uh, – Put together a framework for scheduling police chief appointments uh, for interviews that's sort of public interviews before we get rolling though the town clerk left me a nice note saying the town clerk's office is going to be open at uh, nine to noon on friday may 6th and noon is the last hour to apply for an absentee ballot application for the annual town election to be held on may 7th and that's from eight to three here at the uh, sunderland elementary school actually over there so again town clerk's office open nine to noon friday last chance to get in on that vote so thank you town clerk so we can vote for david <laughs> or bob <laughs> or steve or bob, that's right. no maybe okay so before we start rolling on with mutual aid agreements tommy and david comments about uh, annual town meeting um another good one it was it was good okay tom anything you want to weigh in on um, I would just like to thank uh, everyone that participated and came out. I know some, I, I, some people say, "What you?" When they talk about comments about town meeting, I heard it was boring. Um, it's supposed to be boring. Um, <laughs> excitement. If it's exciting, that means there's probably something that we screwed up on. So. When someone tells me that it was boring, it's a compliment to the Board of Selectmen and the town administrator that it, and the moderator that it was boring, and the town clerk. Mm -hmm. um, if you tell me anything besides boring, that usually means that we're in trouble. I, I would say that if anybody ever that comes to town meeting and has never watched one of our meetings, if you saw the discussion about um, the budget and the amount of time we put talked about two thousand dollars or five thousand dollars whatever it was that's our that's what we do from january to april we, that's where we spend our time and, and um but it's important um because we, we want to we we want to be able to justify the numbers that that are put down and our taxpayers pay um and um i i think the the greatest thing to come out of town meeting is that we respect at least this board respects the vote of town meeting um, and I think that's sometimes lost sometimes people um, don't understand that the people that go to town meeting are the ones that really shape um, the budget of the community and the tax rate going forward um, and it's kind of important if you complain about taxes and about money um the board of selectmen can come in and recommend a three percent reduction in salary um we go to town meeting someone can increase it so i would, I would say go to town meeting if you're concerned good point i would just i would just follow up and we'll roll into the next piece of the agenda that town meeting is um uh, governance and not politics it's so oftentimes boring because it's the clunky wheels and grinding gears that keep roads paved, keep the fire department uh, staffed, you know, all of that kind of stuff is governing as opposed to politicking. So I happen to think it's good primal input, absolutely direct. You have, if you show up and you participate, the rare opportunity to actually forge that piece. I would also say that these annual exercises that we have referred to as town meeting elections that come up they're they're only like a snapshot in the movie that's the life of sunderland if you look at one in the still frame and then you put 10 of them together in a row and make a movie it's a good place okay 
Next up, mutual aid, why? And what does it get us? Um, in case of emergencies, it would get us more help. Mm -hmm. Kind of like when we had our micro bursts and the trees were down everywhere and or the October snowstorms. Mm -hmm. We had to call in help from MEMA helped us do that. This is a statewide mobilization type thing. Okay. Where we can get resources here and they just want to formalize that with your signature and approval. So, so if I could ask Bob, it's, it's of course we have mutual aid with adjoining communities. Those are individual agreements. Recently, there was a countywide that was through law enforcement, and now this is mutual aid opt-in form, and that's Commonwealth wide. So I'm hearing you say correct, and that's interagency mm -hmm. or just like EMS? No, it's interagency. It, I think it has more like highway and yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, stuff like that in there. I see that if we need wood chippers or right. loaders or, exactly. right. you know, that kind of stuff. Okay. I say that because people may or may not remember or don't even know how much uh, energy and effort that it was the DCR of all agencies that came over with chainsaws, chaps, guards, chippers. Like, right. You know, you know. anyway, so I think that's frankly amazing. And okay. a lot of that stuff gets organized through the. Uh, Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency. That's all me. They driven. call up their resources. Mm -hmm. They get them coming to us. So that's the asking for help side. <clears throat> On the flip side, if another community asks for help, we have capacity, we participate? Yep. Correct, we do. Okay. You know, just like our Tri-State Fire Mutual Aid, that's the one that we belong to since the 60s. And mm -hmm. You know, we go to different towns and they come to here and, you know, we're doing a lot more of that nowadays. Right, right. And the, the idea is as we find ourselves <clears throat> a little bit better networked with yeah. other, other <clears throat> cities and towns across the Commonwealth, we're finding that instead of the old method of you have an issue here in Sunderland, let's say, you, you take the adjacent towns and then you keep working out, well, all of a sudden all your resources are, are pulled into one spot from the entire county or two or three counties. So what they're doing now is they're being a little bit more spotty, if you will, in terms of pulling resources in from one area to another. So in case something does happen adjacent to a couple miles away from that original place yep. where everybody is, there's still adequate uh, reservoir effect, if you will, nice. of, uh, of resources Probably. and things that you can, can have there faster instead of having people travel 40 minutes to get somewhere, mm -hmm. you've got some help. 10 minutes away. That's that smart. sort of thing. Okay. Tom, David, anything? There is a concern. Bob brought this forward in the past. And we said we were going to have him back for a conversation after reading about it and our commitments and any risks. It doesn't sound like there's any upside risk. I think we want to be part of a community, a larger, right. much larger community. Yeah. And there aren't a lot of situations where this gets invoked. Right. There, it's um, if, a little bit. Yeah. Be a it's, really big it's, scale. It, it, it's not something that I'd anticipate the, the fire department being called away on mm -hmm. weekly, monthly, maybe not even annually. It could be something that's you know, one of those big once in two, three, five, ten year yeah. sort of events. In, in, that, in that setting, Steve, again, MEMA did the fair amount of reimbursing for agencies that helped here, as well as our outside of extra extra budget expenditures, energies, and efforts when we had our own... It, it, response. So I would imagine the same applies. You're going to be in the rears a little bit for a little while. There's there's never any guarantees. Yeah, right. It's, I know. <laughs> we can declare those emergencies right. and in the hope of getting reimbursed somewhere down the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's, that's the idea. Yeah, okay. Tom, what do you think? Right. I mean, how do you not do it? Yeah. Oh, that, it's all good stuff. Good. There's going to be more of this coming down the pipe that you're going to be looking at. Uh, another thing, Steve's got some information on. Burkhard is going to be contacting you to look at another of this type of project. Has yeah. Steve started going to the monthly chief of uh, fire chief meetings? Yeah. Does he talk yet, or is he still listening? No. A lot of talking going I, on. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, like. I brought Tom to one once. I can. He was I, impressed. I pick my spots. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Keep, maintain the tradition of Bob Ahern, okay? <laughs>
<laughs> one of the one of the things that that came up at a recent meeting was what what uh, Bobby referred to, and they're calling it a, a MAC, multi-agency coordination center, and. Um, There'll be a gentleman from the FERCOG that'll contact Sherry for a formal presentation. Sure. So I won't, I won't lay it all out. But essentially, it's a little bit more of a localized resource gathering mm -hmm. uh, effort nice. through the FERCOG that can help us deal with some of these statewide mobilizations a little bit better. Be more of a local voice instead of us reaching out to MEMA, say, or Boston or what have you. They'll do it on our behalf. Hmm. So it's, it's an interesting scenario and uh, something that, that I support and uh, Bob supports as well. Nice. Okay, so uh, motion to sign. Uh, motion. Second. Motion is made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero. Okay, it'll be downstairs. That was easy. So One last thing. Uh, here. We have an operator name once in two and a half years and we just got a bill from our old ambulance building company that one of the insurance carriers overpaid us and now they want their money back so it's gonna <laughs> I'll turn in some paperwork to go on your next special town meeting or what have you okay oh, just because we, we just yes. dissolved the ambulance yeah, fund know. And all. <laughs> it's perfect good timing there's always one late invoice I get it we'll figure something out with tried to ignore to it, but it didn't go away so. <laughs> we even put up a pretty good argument. It didn't work. It didn't work. Oh, oh well. Uh, that's what it is, right? That's right. We can take care of that. All right. We'll get this signed and move forward. And uh, as always, we deeply value the energy and efforts you guys put forward. Any other pearls of wisdom? That's it. All right. Enjoy Have your night. night. Thanks yeah. so much. Thanks. Okay. We have minutes in front of us from April 20. Thank you. Thank Motion. Second. Uh, motion is made and second. This is the review of the minutes of the 20th of April. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero, please. And next, the last one we have for minutes is April 25th. It's nice it's only one page double-sided yeah. as opposed to... <laughs> <laughs> Motion on the one page double sided. <laughs> okay. Second. Motion's made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero, please. Okay. Next up here, we have uh, initial comments um, on town meeting were, were put out there. I'd like to just revisit the notion and thank everybody that participated at a town meeting. As always, those discussions um, are uh, for the benefit of the community in total. Well, Warren is prepared with that in mind, and uh, frankly, I still enjoy all of the elements of town meeting. Uh, Board of Selectmen's updates. Tom, anything new and exciting after town meeting? Um, no, I, I, I would. I, I think in town meeting, a lot of times things get um, they they go underreported. For some reason, we don't appear to have time. I can't uh, think um, if anybody knew how much time was put in by the Pathway Commission, the Pathway Good Committee, point. for the that the parcel of land, um, and that that could be such a great, great thing. And, and and the thing is, is that we really aren't spending a whole bunch of money to make it happen. No, great point. A lot of work, but not a lot of money. And, but a lot's going to get it done, and. And there's eighteen thousand dollars coming to the town from <clears throat> one source, and other money's coming from other sources, and and um, and and I think we're taking care of things that uh, have been in arrears since 1938 or whenever the bridge got wiped out. I mean, so I, I mean, I just can't thank the pathway committee enough. Um, but beyond that, it's um, about our whole town as a, the people involved as a whole. Um, we're, we're lucky as a board of selectmen because we get up, we're up here and, and a, a lot of the good things, sometimes we get, we get credit for the bad, but most of the time we have a lot of good things happening that we, but it's really a lot of the people are doing a lot of good work out there. And I just like to thank them and and sometimes some people just get involved in one thing and they're really involved in one one thing 
And a prime example is Nancy Maglione a few years ago. She was really into the finance committee and she was so hard on 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 certain things and and her legacy on the finance committee was some of the, uh, the policies that we have for you know how to spend free cash and, mm -hmm. and and she really worked hard on that and I go back and Peter Gagarin the same way when, when he was on the finance committee but so sometimes a lot of people it, it you don't have to do you don't have to be involved in everything but sometimes if there's something that makes you that tweaks your interest it's it's interesting to know that you your expertise or your is is needed and wanted and appreciated so again i'd like to thank everybody that takes you know the time and makes our community what it is because i think we're very lucky to have the, the number of people that are involved and, and i hope also people understand that um when we had at town meeting we had discussions not arguments um we had different we had different opinions on certain things mm -hmm. one person wasn't more right or more wrong than the other person they just have different opinions and we were able to solve them in a civil courteous and um manner and i think i think that's important also you can get people yelling and screaming and I think I think that's important as well. The decorum of town meeting, yeah, it, it's important. I, and to me, again, it's it's important that we're able that we bring our bring our differences together, and we have the time, to, and and we have the um, courtesy to one another that we allow the differences to be expressed. And and it's not easy. And some people putting it in winning and losing. Yeah. I don't necessarily believe it's a winning and losing. Um, I think when the town meeting, after a period of time, you, you think when, when a town meeting ends, you know, I don't think of it as winning or losing different points. It's just that's the will of the town meeting. Right. And, and we accept the will of the town meeting. And I just think it's pretty cool that we can go there and we can have which seems to be so much different than the nation as a whole. We can have these conversations at town meeting and walk away and no one's yelling and screaming at one another so good point it's keeping it local in that sense we yeah. all have to see each other every day it's a sign of respect for each other well and, you know, it's it's kind of like a performance you know in a way it's like a show kind of like frontier doing fred you work all that time for a big <laughs> performance you know and then it comes and you hope it goes off well all the work that gets put into it from Cherry and the finance committee and all and all the other ones and, and like you're saying and actually our meetings really kind of start kicking off around November so mm -hmm. and then we start talking about okay it's time to start thinking about your budgets for next year and, and all of that. So. I, 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 I just think that we have a uh, the attorney that comes out from Copeland and Page people may not recognize the fact but he's a managed you know he's a partner in the mm -hmm. firm. Right. He's not, and this is the largest uh, municipal law firm in the state of Massachusetts, probably has over 100 community, oh, I'm sure, there are well over 100 communities yeah. Yeah. that they represent in the state of Massachusetts. And <laughs> he comes to our community because he likes it. He likes, he likes, he likes the, uh, the tone, he likes the commitment, uh, he likes what happens at town meeting. Um, and that's pretty unusual. Usually, that a uh, town meeting is someone they just send um, a junior, a junior, a junior, whatever. Um, but we have a partner come out from the law firm to come out from Boston, Arlington. I think he lives in Arlington. Arlington, yeah. And he comes out to the meeting because he enjoys our town meeting. I think that's personally. I think that speaks volumes about our residents. Yeah. Good point. The decorum, the style, all of it. Yeah, absolutely. The information that uh, is used to make a decision. Right. Yeah. Good point. Well, swing to the far left of the table. What do you think of town meeting? It's your first time here. That's right. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> is that a cue card? You got yeah. There? <laughs> Perfect. All right. It's town meeting updates over. Uh, we we'll get town administrator updates, then we'll we'll swing back to the police chief search schedule what do you think town administrator anything well, going on we get to dig out from town <laughs> meeting and start yeah. getting I like that actually yeah 
Um, so I'm looking at the projects that will be moving forward as a result of town meeting actions, scheduling meetings. Um, I'll be attending the Mass in Motion meeting at FERCOG this week, and there's a park grant meeting that I'll be attending with um, some of the Community Pathways mm -hmm. um, members in Amherst on nice. Thursday, I believe. And then Monday I have a meeting with Community Pathways um, to discuss ne next steps with regard to the boat launch project. Um, I'm coordinating with Lauren and FERCOG on the PATH grant, setting up a 120 North oh, meeting. Nice. So we can proceed with that project. Um, I have a meeting next week with the Energy Committee to talk about uh, green communities and some incentives for this year. So it's just um, getting all of those things going again. Just when you think starting of, the process over. Yeah, just when you think you got <laughs> your breath, right? And the list comes out. We'll be looking at capital projects and getting those um, ready as well. So. Um, I don't think we'll get bored anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> that never seems to be a problem. <laughs> no. That's a good point. Well, thank you so much for, for not just that, Sherry, but for your fine work leading up to and through town meetings. So, as you said, only gets better. Okay. Uh, schedule for police chief search candidates. We have been forwarded three names. Um, Prerogative of the board, I, I, I've, I've heard and I echo the notion of not doing this on Saturday in one big long day. Um, I am uh, inclined to mash up our calendars and do uh, the next, maybe establish, reach out to the candidates this week and see about over the next two weeks. Two weeks, yeah. Yep. Right. So if we put a window in there, Sherry, of availability, that's going to be from... What is today? Fourth, <coughs> right? Second. Third. Second. Second. Yeah. So if we go uh, announce this week and say the week of the ninth and the week of the sixteenth. See if we can get them in through there. These are public interviews, and if it's uh, again, if I could ask the board's indulgence. Uh, if we could make it Monday through Wednesday in that Thursdays and Fridays in the evenings, I'm unavailable. So, 9, 10, 11, 16, That's 17, 18. Okay. Yeah. So, Sherry, you reach I out to We only got three of them, so it's not like a lot of them. Right. Yeah. Well, it's still mashing up calendars, but I understand. Okay. And Monday and Wednesday, is that Scott? A Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Okay. Either way, 9, 10, 11, or 16, 17, 18. And we should be able to be wrapped up, I would think, by the 18th going forward into, the, into our meeting on the 23rd. So can I suggest, I, so I suggest that we uh, start forwarding uh, our questions, questions. Yep. and also out there for the audience if someone yeah, wants to, uh, um, and again, the interviews are going to be public, Yep. so we definitely invite you to attend those hearings or those interviews. Also, if anybody out there has uh, any questions that they'd like to have asked, mm -hmm. I would send a email to the Suckman's office mm -hmm. or call. We're stopping and see Sherry. Um, we get some good questions from our pe from our residents. So, yep. if you have anything that you want to put forward, please do. And actually, we have already received a couple electronically, yes. and I think that just shows shows the importance of the position, but also the the enthusiasm to participate from the residents. It's good stuff all the way around. So total list of questions, and then we can wean those down. Um, again, so reach out next week, uh, have our schedule laid out, and get right after them. Okay. So again, questions, contact the office. That's 665-1441 uh, or electronically via the website. And uh, we look forward to this process. Okay. Anything else? Uh, we need an appointment. We have a request here from the town clerk. Appointment of an election officer? Yes. This is from Wendy Hu, the town clerk, dated the 27th of April, and it says, Hi, would it be possible to appoint Helen Clark as an election officer? Thank you. Okay, so we have a question that says, Would it be possible? To answer the question, it would be possible. It would be yes, possible. Would be okay. Possible. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's so, what she has, That's right? exactly what she Anyway, yeah. thank you, town clerk. Is there a motion to appoint Helen Clark as an election officer for the current the current election year? Motion. 
Is there a second? Second. Motion's made and seconded to elect Helen Clark, and thank you, Helen, for <clears throat> participating, continuing to participate. All those in favor? Aye. Three to zero. Okay, our annual election, the other part of your chance to participate is uh, this Saturday the 7th, it's at the elementary school. Uh, it is the most fundamental of all of it, although we don't have a lot of contested components, we don't have any contested components on the slate, it's still an election. So if you couldn't make it to town meeting, you can certainly participate in our election. And as was mentioned at the beginning of the show, the town clerk's going to be office will be open uh, Monday 8 to 12 for people who want to participate in an absentee format, okay? That's really important as well. All right. Any other news that's fit to print, areas to cover? If not, is there a motion to adjourn? Oh, motion. Second. We have a motion made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. aye. Three to zero, please. 3.75. I didn't hear an eye back there. Oh. Aye. Aye. All right. Aye, Thanks aye, so yeah. much.